If you're doing hip pain physical therapy exercises, there's a very good chance that you're making one of the mistakes that I'm gonna cover in this video. I'm Dr. Dave Candy, physical therapist and owner of More for Life, and I see so many patients doing hip pain physical therapy exercises from other physical therapists or physiotherapists and doing them incorrectly. And so in this video, I'm gonna share some of the most common mistakes that I see when people are doing physiotherapy exercises for their hip pain and how to do them correctly. And make sure to stay to the very end of the video because I'm gonna share three even more common reasons why people don't get better from doing hip physiotherapy exercises. So let's get started. One of the absolute most common hip exercises that people do in physical therapy is an exercise known as the clamshell. And that's where you're laying on your side and the purpose of it is to strengthen the hip adductor muscles. These muscles on the side of your hip, your gluteus medius, your gluteus minimus, as well as your hip rotator muscles, your piriformis, and several other muscles in the back part of your hip. And so how you do the exercise just generally is separating your knees like that, and you should feel it kind of in your hip or buttocks right there. Now, it's a really common exercise. It's a good exercise. It's not a super hard exercise because you're laying down and doing exercises laying down is nowhere near the demands that you put on your leg when you're standing up and putting your entire body weight on it. But if your hips are really weak or you're just starting out or you've got a whole lot of pain, you just can't bear weight on it, they're a starting place. But there are some really common mistakes that people make when doing that clamshell exercise. And the most common one that I see is improper stabilization of their lower back. And so instead they end up using their lower back muscles instead of the hip muscles that they're actually trying to get stronger. Now, a lot of times people do that exercise for back pain as well. And so if you're moving at your back instead of at your hip, you're just potentially making the back problem worse as well. So here's the mistake that people make with the clamshell exercise, and that's allowing themselves to roll back like this, just moving the leg back and forth and letting the body kind of roll back with it. Now, the reason that's a problem is because you want to use these muscles right here just to lift the leg or to lift the knee. If you're rolling back, you start incorporating your back muscles, and you're not using these muscles as much. The other problem with rolling back when you're doing the clamshell is that the gluteus medius, and particularly the back part or the posterior fibers of the gluteus medius, they're hip external rotators. But when you start rolling back like this, you actually start incorporating a muscle called your tensor fascia lata, which also abducts the leg or raises the leg up, but it's an internal rotator of the hip. And that tensor fascia lata attaches to the IT band and can cause IT band syndrome or lateral hip pain or pain on the outside of the knee as well. So you don't wanna get this tensor fascia lata into the exercise. So to stop that, you actually wanna roll forwards a little bit. Roll forwards a little bit more than you think you might have to, and if you're worried that you might not be far enough, just roll a little bit farther. You almost can't go too far forward for this. So roll forwards and then use your hands to kind of make sure you're not rolling back. Keep yourself pushed forward a little bit and use your fingers on your hip to make sure you can feel your gluteal muscles or your hip muscles right here contract or squeeze. And then it doesn't have to be a large lift. In fact, it's usually a pretty tiny lift. So you're just lifting up a teeny little bit, feeling these gluteal muscles working back here. I usually tell patients to hold for five or 10 seconds. That way you can really feel the contraction. And this isn't so much about just doing a lot of reps lackadaisically. It's more about getting the right muscles to work or the right muscles to turn on. So that's the clamshell exercise. And I mentioned that this is a abduction movement, which means moving your leg out to the side. 
And that brings me into the next common mistake that people do with hip pain exercises. And that's the hip abduction exercise or the sideline leg raise. Now this is a harder version of the clamshell because instead of having to lift just this much of your leg, you now have to lift the entire weight of your leg. So it's approximately twice as much force out of your glutes because you're not just having to lift the upper leg weight, but the lower leg weight as well. So when you do this, there are several different variations, but if you're just raising straight out to the side, you want to activate your gluteal muscles, make sure you don't allow your pelvis to hike up. So you can see here that I'm both rolling back as well as kind of allowing this pelvis to hike. So you don't want to feel movement up in through here. You don't need to raise the leg super high. In fact, less is more. So make sure you have good stabilization. Keep yourself slightly rolled forward. And then just a slight lift like that. Again, holding five or 10 seconds is a good way to make sure you're feeling it in the right place. Now, if you just want to do a straight hip abduction exercise, this is good technique to do that. But usually it's the posterior fibers or the back fibers of the gluteal muscles that get weak. And so you actually want to externally rotate or turn toes up and knees up just a little bit in order to get those posterior fibers activated. And then you're doing sort of the same leg raise, but with your toes up and body rolled forward. So your top half is going forwards while your bottom half is going backwards. And then again, it's just a tiny lift. And that's actually quite a pretty hard demand on the posterior fibers of the gluteus medius. Now, the next laying down exercise is laying on your back, doing a bridge. And this is to strengthen your butt muscles or your gluteus maximus. And when you do a bridge, the goal is to get hip extension and because you have your knees bent, you're not using your hamstrings as much. You're using pretty much just your butt muscles. And so when you do this, the way that most people do it is just lift their bottom up in the air. You can see you get a bat, lot of back arch right here. And when you get that back arch, if you're doing this, for example, for lower back pain, that can actually make the symptoms worse. Additionally, if you're using your back extension, you're not getting hip extension, which is the goal of the exercise in the first place. So to do this exercise correctly, you want to do a pelvic tilt like that and just flatten your lower back out on the bed or the floor or the table or whatever you're doing it on. Get your lower back nice and flat and almost tilt it more than you think you might have to. Really flatten that lower back out and then keep that tilt as you go to lift. And don't allow yourself to lose that tilt. So if I'm doing this without losing the tilt, this is really about all the farther I'm getting. Now you may feel a stretch in your quadriceps because you have your knees bent and you're extending at the hip. So you may feel a stretch in your quadriceps and you should really feel your glutes working or your butt muscles working. If you don't feel that, you're probably losing the tilt. So tilt, hold that tilt, and then do just a slight lift, keeping your abdominal muscles tight so you don't lose that tilt. And again, I tell people usually to hold for five or 10 seconds and then come back down. Tilt, hip extend, and don't lose the tilt. Hold five or 10 seconds, and then come back down. So those are the three laying down exercises. And again, those are really common physiotherapy exercises that people do for hip pain. And usually those are pretty decent exercises if you do them correctly. But the problem with them is that they're all laying down and largely people have hip pain when they're standing, walking, going up and down stairs, squatting, doing things in weight bearing. And so laying down exercises don't functionally mimic the way that we actually use our hips in everyday life. And so the more functional exercises to do are hip exercises where you're standing up. And some really common hip exercises when you're standing up 
are the hip abduction exercise where you stand and you may have to hold on to something and you do basically the same version of that side lying leg raise where you come out to the side like that and a common mistake that people will make is that they either allow their pelvis to hike up on this side so they get too much trunk muscle working and they're not isolating into the hip right there the other thing that you might see is a trunk lean where you kind of counterbalance your trunk over this way in order to help keep your balance now truthfully balance is the biggest part of this exercise it's not that hard to lift the weight of your leg going out to the side like this what's actually much harder is to hold the whole rest of your body stationary on one leg while you're going out to the side like this. So usually the first thing that I tell people is to get really comfortable standing on one leg and to be able to balance really well on one leg. If you can't even stand on one leg, then you probably really have no business going out to the side like this because again, this isn't super hard. It's this leg that's getting most of the exercise. And so when you're kicking out to the side, you can almost view that as more of a perturbation, throwing your body off balance and having to shift the way that you're activating this muscle. And so that moving the leg really makes it harder for the stance leg. And so get really good at standing and balancing on one leg and then practice kicking out to the side. So that's the standing hip abduction exercise. Now the next exercise is a hip extension exercise. And that's where you're kicking backwards like this. Now, much like the bridge exercise, you don't want to allow too much back arch, which is the common flaw, is that people go too far into extension and they end up getting back extension instead of hip extension. Now you may not be able to go super far if you do this correctly. So just doing slight backward kicks like that. Really again, thinking about squeezing your glute. And again, a lot of the effort on this is really just maintaining the balance on the stance leg and doing the stabilization in the trunk. So if you're using this leg to stabilize your hip and pelvis, and you're using these muscles to stabilize your trunk, that makes it a really good functional exercise to help you be able to push off when you're walking without getting a lot of back extension. So that's the standing hip extension exercise. And so I've went through five common mistakes with hip strengthening exercises, but what about stretches? Well, largely most people do stretches for hip pain fairly correctly, but there's one really common one that people mess up on pretty often. And that's possibly one of the most important ones, which is the hip flexor stretches. And the hip flexors, they attach to your lower back, as well as to the inner rim of your pelvis. And one of your quadriceps, your rectus femoris, is also a hip flexor. And so one good way to do a hip flexor stretch is to kneel in a half lunge position like this and then to push your pelvis forward so you feel a stretch in the front of your hip now if you go too far with this and get too much extension then you're going to end up arching your back and you're not really going to stretch your hip flexors so instead you want to think about doing that pelvic tilt, kind of like when you start the bridge, and then just push your hips forward a little bit. And this is already a pretty big stretch without going that far forwards. So you don't have to go way out like this in order to get a good hip flexor stretch. In fact, it's better if you just tilt and push forwards a little bit because your knee is bent. And so you also stretch the rectus femoris versus as you get further forwards, your knee is relatively more straight. And that means that your rectus femoris isn't getting stretched. It's more just the 
iliopsoas, the one joint hip flexors. So those were six common exercise mistakes that people do when doing physiotherapy exercises for hip pain. Now I mentioned at the beginning that I'd share three problems that are even bigger and that keep people from getting their hip pain better with exercises. And the first one is just dosing. If you're not doing the exercises frequently enough or often enough, physical therapy exercises aren't that hard. They're more brain retraining or neurological retraining. And so if you're not doing them regularly, they're probably not gonna be effective. Additionally, if the dosing is wrong, if you're not doing enough repetitions, or if you're doing not enough weight, or if you're doing too much weight, those can all affect the effectiveness of the exercise as well. But largely, it's frequency. The more often you do them, the better your brain gets that movement pattern ingrained. Now, the second problem is that people treat hip pain exercises like they're one thing but there are different exercises that are good for say groin pain or pain in the front of your hip, for example, from a labral tear or from hip arthritis or pain on the outside of the hip, say from IT band syndrome or from hip bursitis or pain in the back of your hip, which often is referred from your lower back, but it can also come from something like an SI joint dysfunction. And all of those different types of hip pain are gonna have different exercises that are good for it. So just considering hip pain exercises as one thing probably won't be good for any of the things. You need a specific program that's gonna help your specific dysfunction. And then the third thing is just assuming that doing exercises is gonna carry over into your everyday function. Again, largely physiotherapy exercises aren't necessarily to strengthen your muscles as much as they are to retrain better movement habits so that you move better in your everyday life. As we often tell our patients here at More for Life, it's not what you do the one hour per day or less when you're exercising, but it's what you do the other 23 hours when you're not exercising that makes the biggest difference. And so if you don't take the exercises and carry them over into your daily function, even if you do your exercises every day, perfect technique, you're probably not going to get better because those other 23 hours are going to far outweigh the exercises that you're doing. So I would recommend checking with a physical therapist to help get a program that's specific to your type of hip pain, as well as to help you carry over those functional changes into your everyday life. And if you happen to be in St. Louis, we'd be happy to help you with that here at More for Life. And if you're watching this from somewhere else, but you found this video helpful, Give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you can get notified of our future videos. And here are two other videos that will show you exercises for hip arthritis type of pain as well as for hip IT band pain. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.